What's up everyone, it's James Q Quick and I'm back with another video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to create this animated slide-in, pop-in navigation bar that you can find on my website like this. So you see it on the left and then it goes away with the hamburger button and then you can open it full screen there. We're gonna do this with vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, so I'm gonna start over here in my project. I've got three files, HTML file, app.js, app CSS. Uh, actually, if you're interested, you can download the web boilerplate extension and this will kind of automatically generate uh, all of those files for you and then connect them. So you reference the CSS and JavaScript file from your HTML file if you want to. I'm also using the live server extension. You can see it's running down here on port 5500. That way when I type in stuff, it will automatically, automatically reflect in the browser here. All right, so let's start to build out this uh, side menu or slide in bar, whatever you want to call it. And what we're going to have is we've got our container. So that's going to be where the main content lives. And then we're also going to have a nav with an ID of uh, menu bar. We could call this anything nav bar, whatever you want. Actually, nav bar probably makes more sense. I think let's do nav bar and notice uh, I'm using these snippets here. These are Emmet abbreviations or Emmet snippets. It allows you to do shorthands, shorthand codes to generate HTML and then CSS as well. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, uh, I would recommend trying it out. If you're new to it, uh, give Emmet Simpits a try. If not, uh, you can just type it out to follow uh, as I'm doing here. So we've got our nav bar uh, with our nav with an ID of nav bar. Inside of that, let's just look at uh, what we have. We've got this top part. That's kind of the brand, the nav brand. Then we've got the links and then we've got kind of the footer. This is the stuff that goes at the bottom here. So let's start to lay that stuff out. Um, inside of here, we're gonna have a div with a class of nav brand. So again, using those Emmet snippets. Inside of there, uh, we're gonna have a P tag with James Q quick inside of it. And actually, I'm gonna make this a little bit fancier. So I'm gonna do a strong around the Q. All right, that way we can highlight it red in a second. Okay, and then below that, I'm also gonna have an image with a source of, this is actually the file right from my website. Uh, you don't have to have this image. If you wanna just skip the image, you can. If you want to go and grab the image from going to jamesqquick.com and then right click and then copy image address, you can get the same image or just grab your own image or any image you want to, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you might have to resize your image, so make sure that you set a width and a height to, to get it around the same size. All right, so we've got, uh, there's our nav brand. We just have two things in it, the P, uh, P tag with James Q Quick and then the image inside of it. Then inside of there, we're gonna have an unordered list and that unordered list is gonna have an ID or a class of nav items. So obviously these are gonna be like the links that go inside there. And we'll just uh, do a couple here as dummies and I'm gonna do uh, shift and option and then down to generate multiple of these. So we'll have home, about, uh, courses, blog, and then we could, I mean, you could do whatever you want in here, nothing fancy there. So those are gonna be our navigation items or our navigation uh, links. And then lastly, we'll have uh, a div with a class of footer. So just dot footer with Emmet will do that. And then inside of there, I'm gonna do basically the same thing with that James Q quick. So I'm gonna have a James and then a strong and the Q in there. Why do I have two cursors? Don't want two cursors. And then uh, quick to end that. All right. So there's our basic content. If we come over and look at what we have, uh, one, it doesn't look that great. I don't know what's wrong with, uh, oh, I think this, it does not. Well, that's actually because we've got it in the alts, not the source. All right, so put that link in the source and hopefully that will show if we type it in here, right? There we go. All right, so there, there it is. All right, so we're good. So we've got our content showing up here. Uh, not really fancy yet. Obviously we need to do some styling on this. So the first thing we wanna keep in mind is that this navigation bar, while the screen is relatively wide, is gonna take up a certain amount of width. In this case, we're gonna use 250 pixels and it's gonna always take up that width and it's always gonna stay on the left-hand side. So to start styling that, what we can do is we can come in and select our nav bar. And let's just, uh, let's just say it's got a width of 250 pixels. It's gonna have a height of 100 view height. So this is gonna take up the entire height of the page. It's also going to be position fixed. So we want it to stay there and never move. And then we can get into uh, doing some colors just to kind of match this thing up 
with um, with what we would expect. So I'm gonna grab, we've got a couple of these pre-typed out here. I'm gonna give it a background color of that dark gray. Let's just see what that looks like. All right, so that's not exactly what we're looking for yet. We also want to add the color for the text of white, so it'll be a little bit better. And uh, then notice we, let's do an inspect here to figure out why this thing is coming further down. All right, so the thing that we're really missing here, notice that this is uh, kind of moving far down. We want this navigation bar to be at the top. So uh, with position uh, fixed, we can do a top of zero and a left, oops, not that, whatever that was, a left of zero. So it should position this thing in the top left. And that's actually getting really close to what we want. But notice also that this is like covering some of this content. So what we need to do, I don't, did I set a max width on this? Looks like I've got the zoom on here for some odd reason. Okay, I don't know why that was happening. Um, but notice that this H1 now is being, it's not being covered up because the text isn't long enough, but it is, um, it is kind of bleeding into the navigation bar. So what we wanna do is on the body, we wanna do a margin left of the exact same width of that uh, navigation bar, so 250 pixels. So now notice that this thing is gonna slide over and the container is just gonna kind of sit um, to the right of that bar. And then we've got, uh, what is this like body padding? Uh, yes, yeah, so let's get rid of uh, body. Let's do a margin of zero and then overwrite margin left and hopefully, okay. So that makes it kind of just fill all the content. So that's starting to look better. We've got our navigation bar over here. We could put a bunch of content in here and the navigation bar would stay. Even if we scrolled, it would stay exactly fixed where we want it, which is good. So I'm gonna do a few things in here to try to uh, style this navigation bar. One is I wanna add some padding. So we'll do 30 pixels on top to give it some breathing room up there and then 20 pixels on the left and right. And then also I wanna use display flex. So I want to basically distribute the, the nav brand or the, the header the nav links and then the footer. So I wanna spread those things out. So to do that, I can do a display of flex and then a flex direction of column. So I wanna stack everything and then justify content to be space between. So this will put space in between all of these items and it'll spread them out uh, exactly how we want, which is good. And then one other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna center the nav brand and the footer. So let's go ahead and select nav, nav, brand and let's do text align center and then same thing for the footer so nav footer uh, text align center let's make sure that i've got that class the nav footer class on the html do we have a nav footer we've just got footer okay so we can do that so uh just footer there and that should align this thing centered horizontally and then this one centered horizontally as well and we've got our links uh, down in the middle. So let's actually go in, let's style the links a little bit, make those a little bit prettier. Let's do uh, the nav items. Want to get rid of, because they're UL, because they are uh, uh, list items, want to get rid of the start, the indentation and the start. So padding inline start is zero. So that'll make sure that they don't have any extra padding on the left-hand side. And then let's go in and style each of, so the nav, in the nav, nav items, we wanna style each li. And we'll do a few things here. List style is list style type is none. That means uh, we don't wanna do a bullet point. We'll spread them out a little bit with bar, margin bottom, 10 pixels. And then we wanna text align these uh, left just to make sure they are, and I think they already were, so that's okay. All right, so those are there, which is good. Now I could probably, let's bump up the size on that a little bit. So let's say font size 16, maybe. Is that picking up that? Uh, maybe we can go even bigger, maybe 18. Make that a little bit bigger there. Okay, so that looks good. And with these now, we can also add a few things, just some hover effects. So when we hover on one, so let's do uh, same selector here, nav items, and then it's children of li, and then a hover effect. And when we hover, we want to add cursor of pointer. All right, so we want to do that. And then also we can do a transform and scale, and we can just scale it uh, just a little bit. So to set the scale to 1.01, .01. this will give us just a really subtle kind of hover effect here. It may even be a little hard to tell, but it's just a little kind of a nice subtle thing there to have. One additional thing, I'm gonna go ahead and style this strong tag up here. So just general, 
Uh, strong tags, they will have a color. Uh, but let me grab this color. This one right here, paste this in. This will give it that red color. And now we should see the Q up here and the Q down here. So that's good, that works. And actually I think uh, just for a little bit of differentness, let's do the handle here. James Q quick as a handle. That'll differentiate a little bit from the top and the bottom. Okay, so we've got basically the, the layout here of our nav bar. Uh, but it's not it's not responsive obviously so if i do if i start scrolling in or shrinking the screen it's not responsive that's actually something we really want to fix so in general when uh when we get down to a certain point and actually we can come over to this one to show you when we get down to a certain breakpoint, which is 786 pixels we want the navigation bar to take up the full screen so you can see it just kind of scrolls across this entire screen and then we'll close it with the hamburger button so let's uh let's just add the selector for the media query for that breakpoint. So let's paste that into our CSS file. Let's scroll down to the bottom. And uh, media and uh, max width is gonna be 786. So once it gets below 7, 786, these properties are going to um, are gonna show. So uh, we want our slide menu. Uh, let's see here. We want the width to be 100% of the view width so we'll do a vw so we'll make it full width it's still going to be static so it's still going to sit on top of everything and not or uh, fixed and not move and we can leave that i think for now and we should see at 786 let's see why that's not being applied our nav bar oh i think i changed the name from slide menu to nav bar all right so now we should see this thing takes up the entire space a couple things we want to do is we can style the uh, the links here to be centered now, just because it's a little bit different of a layout. So we'll do nav items and then li and then text align center. All right, so we'll go ahead and style those to be centered. We can make them bigger, we could do different things. We're not gonna get too detailed in the design here. I probably would make these a little bit bigger. But uh, this is how we want it to show, but obviously we have no way to interact with this to be able to open and close and toggle that menu. So that's where we need a hamburger button. Let's add this div in here above the nav bar. So let's add in this hamburger button and this is the hex code for a hamburger button. So if you just type that in just like that, what you'll get is the hamburger button right here. A little bit small, but it's there. So there is that hamburger button and uh, we could probably, probably make that a span just to be a little bit better. It's not gonna take up the entire space. What, what we want this hamburger button to do is we want it to sit uh, basically in this top right corner. So to do that, we can do a position fix. So we'll come in and we'll uh, select hamburger button and we can do similar to what we did before. Let's do position uh, fixed. And then we can set the uh, top, set it 30 pixels from the top and then right will be 30 pixels from the right. So this should put it in that top right corner. That's basically where we want it. And we can add a few more styles here. Uh, we can do our hamburger button hover. So hamburger button hover. We want this to have a cursor pointer. And that's pretty standard. Anytime you have a button, go ahead and add that cursor. It'll help you out just a little bit there. All right, but by default, we don't want this thing to show. So we actually want our hamburger button menu to be invisible to start and then we'll show it once we get down to that breakpoint. So for this, we will put a display of none. This will make that hamburger button disappear. So now there's no more hamburger button, but inside of the media query, now we want to show the hamburger button. So let's select the hamburger button. All right, let's grab that, close it out. And then in here, instead of display none, we'll do display inline block, okay? So this means that if we shrink this screen to 786 or 776, what is that breakpoint? Something like that. All right, somewhere in here should be our hamburger button. So let's look and see where that thing is. It's there, but it's not on top of everything else. So let's see if we can set the C Z index to something like 10. And now you can see it there, which is good. All right, so we wanna make sure that that index is uh, 10. So let's set the Z index to 10. That way it'll sit on top of everything and you can still see it there. But then when the screen gets bigger, you don't need it because the nav bar is gonna stay there at the entire time.
So, all right, we see that. Now we wanna have a little bit of functionality that says when we click on that button, we wanna to toggle open and close the, uh, the navigation bar itself. So let's open up our uh, JavaScript file. Let's get a reference to the hamburger button. And we can do that by calling document.get element by ID and then pass in the name of the ID, which is hamburger button, okay? So we'll get that and then we'll set Hamburger button dot uh, add event listener. We'll set a click event. And then this callback will happen when we click. So let's start off by logging uh, button clicked. All right, so anytime we click the hamburger button, this will just log it out, okay? So let's, uh, let's click on it and open our console and you see button clicked, button clicked, button clicked, button clicked. So that seems like it's working pretty well. And now the only thing we wanna do is uh, toggle a class on the side menu to open and close it. So we need to get a reference to the nav bar. So nav bar equals document dot get element by ID and then nav bar. And then we'll take that nav bar and we'll do class list dot toggle and we'll toggle the open class, which we haven't written yet, but we'll come back to that in a second. So if we save this and run again, if we uh, select the nav bar here, and we click this button, you should see class open appears and then it goes away and then appears. So it toggles it every time, which is what we want. So by default, when we come to the small screen, we don't want to show the navigation bar at first. We want to be able to click that hamburger button to show it. So we want to hide it by default. And the way we're going to hide it so that we get the animated like pop in effect is we're going to hide it by basically just putting it off the screen. And to do that, let's come back into the nav bar. We can set uh, transform translate x so we want to translate x we want to just put this thing all the way off the screen at negative 1000 pixels okay so now you see that that thing is gone but we still got this gap here of the container now is sitting over to the right it's got a margin left for no reason so we can actually reset that by grabbing the body and set in margin left to zero all right so that should center all of this content we still have our hamburger button button, our hamburger button, and then it's toggling this class, but we need to use that class now to be able to slide in this pop-in menu. The way we'll do that is we'll do a select on nav bar with a class of open. When that's the case, we'll do a transform of translate X, and we'll just reset it back to zero, which is where it should be, okay? So let's uh, test this out. We've got our hamburger button, we can click it, the menu comes in, we click it again, and it goes away, in, away, and away. It's also responsive, so it will stay there if we have a wider screen and then give us the option to toggle it when uh, we get into smaller screens. Okay, so that's working. That's actually the majority of the functionality. It's working really well. The one last thing we wanna do is give it a little bit of a slide effect to come into here. So the only thing we need to do, which is pretty cool, is we can set a transition transition on a transform property. So anytime transform is called, then we can transition over 500 milliseconds. So save that. Now let's uh, toggle this and you should see it slide in and out, in, out, in, out. It still is going to work here. All right, so that still works. It's still gonna stay there on the left. And then now we have the ability to toggle open that menu fully. So that's almost exactly what I have on my website where I slide in this menu from the left and then on the full screen, it's gonna stay over here anyway. So that is, that is how you create a pretty uh, nifty little pop-in, slide-in, animated and responsive navigation bar or menu in your website using just plain HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I'm curious, have you built any cool, fancy uh, navigation bars or menus? Do you use any frameworks to do that? Um, or is this basically the same kind of technique that you use in your project if you have any other cool effects or ways to do this, would love to hear it. Please share, comment below on the channel. Uh, and until then, I will see you in the next video.